Welcome to the Football Show on PLZ Soccer, sponsored by Arnold Clark. It's Monday, I'm Peter Martin, delighted to have your company. Alan Ruff with me as always. Uh, three guests, Ruffy, Barry Ferguson, and I'm delighted to say St Johnson's Richard Foster joins us here on the programme to look back over the weekend and the Saints very much at the forefront of our thoughts. Here's some of the topics we'll be discussing. Yeah, international football on our minds as well. Uh, we will also look at the head-to-head, -head, Ruffy getting further behind. And, of course, we will uh, not in any way mince our words in calling for Ruffy's head on the Partick Thistle board because it's, <laughs> it's getting grim. We're going to talk about Thistle looking for a win. And uh, we'll also look back over the weekend's games. Aberdeen continued their impressive run of form on Friday night as they beat Hibs 1-0. On a windy night in the Granite City, Ryan Porteous gifted Gary Mackay Stephen the ball 25 yards out, with the Scotland international impressively firing in low to the keeper's left. Hibbs missed several chances to equalise, and Florian Camberry was suspect several times. However, the Dons held on and overtook the Highbeats into sixth place. The two bottom sides in the Premiership shared a point apiece at Dens after a 1-1 draw. St Mirren took the lead through a Simeon Jackson penalty after the striker was deemed to have been fouled by Cami Kerr, although Dundee felt it shouldn't have been given. Kenny Miller then showed he still has his poacher's instinct with a close-range finish to level it up, the first goal of the McIntyre era. A point doesn't do much for either club, but as they both scrap for every point they possibly can, not losing a game is a start. Hearts lost top spot in the Premiership after losing 1-0 to Kilmarnock at Tynecastle. The Jambos dominated large spells of the game, however they couldn't get through a dogged Killy defence. The only time they did, Stephen McLean saw his strike ruled out for offside. Killy won the game with 17 minutes to go, Ross Millen bagging his first goal for the club with a low drive under keeper Bobby Slamal, meaning Hearts haven't won or even scored in their last four games. St Johnston made it five wins from five to push them up to fifth in the table with a comfortable 4-0 win at home to Hamilton. Murray Davidson started the scoring with a rebound for his first goal of the season. A Dre Wright cross was then deflected off Ziggy Gordon to double the host's advantage before the half. Matty Kennedy then slipped one under the Aki's keeper to make it three and Wotherspoon capped the win with an open goal from a Kane cutback. Five wins in a row and five clean sheets too, a record for the Saints in the top flight. Celtic moved to the top of the Premiership for the first time this season but were left frustrated by a well-drilled Livingston side in this stalemate. Livy striker Dolly Menger appeared to gesture his head towards Ryan Christie and could be retrospectively charged by the SFA. Christie nearly added to his goals, but Liam Kelly was in fine form to deny him. Detman Gallagher forced several saves from Scott Bain, but the Celtic keeper was up to the task. A late strike by Rogic was the closest Celtic came to breaking the deadlock, but the impressive Kelly made sure honours were even. Rangers put a poor 10-man Motherwell to the sword as they beat them 7-1 at Ibrox. Arfield began the scoring with an easy finish, but Curtis Main pulled one back shortly after. However, the game turned after Carl McHugh was shown two quick bookings for what Motherwell manager Stephen Robertson called a disgrace. Morelos then headed in from a corner to make it three. Middleton scored a well-taken first-time finish with his weak foot and Arfield got his second with another close finish. The goal scoring was completed when summer signing Erosh Grezda scored his first two goals for the club, his first after he dribbled into the box unchallenged and his second a close-range header. It finished Rangers 7, Motherwell 1. Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, there you have it. There's the weekend for you and I, I think the highlight... <coughs> is unbelievably uh, a St Johnson side with five wins, five clean sheets. The, the whole place has been transformed. It certainly has. Um, we needed it. I mean, you know, we were on the back of a, a couple of scalpings. Um, and then we just kind of went back to basics, organised, um, you know, keep it nice and tight at the back. And we've now got players, a lot of pace in the team, Matty Kennedy and Dre Wright especially. Um, and going forward will cause teams problems. Yeah, as, as the manager had one of these, I mean, these guys are well of this, where are we of this week to week. Had, did the manager pull you in at one point and just say to everybody, OK, you know, we need to change our way of thinking? Um, no, he, he never done it in one in one kind of meeting. He, he just kind of, you know, 
he's always about being organised and being difficult to beat. And, and for, for two games, certainly, we weren't, we weren't that at all, which is not like us. I think we kind of we tried to open up a bit and, and maybe play a bit more football. Um, but we're a team where we need to kind of work hard and, and fight and scrap for every, every ball and then go and play from there. And I think we got away from that a little bit. Um, and the manager just kept every day just kind of reiterating what we're about and, and where our strengths are and where our weaknesses are. And I think we've, we've picked up on that message and obviously we've taken it into the games. Yeah, uh, I mean, Barry, when you look at St Johnston, um, <coughs> everybody was looking. I mean, some fans were actually questioning Tommy Wright, the manager, yeah. uh, which I found absolutely amazing. Uh, but suddenly they're doing what is the catchphrase in the, the, the Premiership. They're punching above their weight again. Yeah, well, was what Richard just says there, they had a, a couple of thumpings, um, and I just went. I just think they went back to what St Johnson are really good at, being organised, difficult to play against. And as you mentioned there again, they have got some good players, um, but the, the job that the manager's done up there's been unbelievable. Um, you were th thinking at some stage, oh, they might have struggled this year, but uh, five games, no goals conceded, um, fair play to not just the manager, but the, the players. Yeah. Far be it for me mm -hmm. to get him a move, but I've always been gobsmacked that he hasn't been actually poached by someone else, Ruffy. Yeah, uh, I, th I think uh, the credentials he's got, that uh, a lot of the St Johnson team were coming at sort of the end of an era, and he, he, he brought in players, you know, good players that suited the St Johnson style of play, and I, I think that's uh, one of his strong points, you know, and he doesn't seem to panic either, you know, he seems to know what he can get out of the players, and he's getting the dividends of it now. Yeah, from an individual point of view, uh, I mean, you've been about, uh, I'm not for a minute suggesting the legs are gone, um, <coughs> but uh, are you playing the best football of your career? Um, I think so. I think, you know, and that's a lot that to do with the manager. I think, you know, the, the way he's been with me, he's been great um, in terms of, you know, now I don't feel any slower or any, you know, less fit than I, I, I was, but it certainly takes me a wee bit longer to recover. So he, he's mindful of that and, you know, I'll get the odd Monday off and then kind of my training on Tuesdays maybe a bit, you know, uh, moderated a little bit more than, than the, the younger players. So he's he's kind of doing everything he can for me and obviously I'm trying to repay him with, with, with playing as, as well as I can. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, it's difficult to put this to you, but a lot of people, players and fans have been suggesting that maybe the international manager could have had a look at you when you consider your experience. Is it something that, that was in the back of your mind thinking, I hope I can get a call? I think <coughs> it, it's always something that's been in the back of my mind. You know, you, I mean, Barry's done it multiple times, but you want to play for your country. As, you know, as, as a player, you want to play um, for your country, represent your country. So it's always been there in, in my mind. Um, and obviously at different times, um, I've felt closer or further away. Um, and, you know, right now, like I say, I'm playing as well as I probably have. Um, I'm probably a better player now than I've ever been. Um, you know, yes, I'm, I'm 33, but I, I feel I feel this time I, I was, you know, I, as close as I've been um, to kind of to getting in the squad and potentially playing for Scotland, especially with the way the injuries have gone and the guys that have pulled out. But you know, it's, it's not to be this time. But I'm just going to keep kind of, you know, the old cliche: you got to keep working hard, and you never know. Yeah, you haven't given up on it. No, not at all. Um, maybe that's what uh, the manager's problem is. He probably thinks I've retired from international football. But. <laughs> <laughs> There's never a better time to tell him, hey, think about it now, I'm here, I'm available. Um, on that point, I, the reason why I love getting you on the programme, and we've been trying to get you on for a while, um, but uh, the last time we met you, I think we were all well and truly inebriated. <laughs> but the, the key point here is you're in good company because you get booed at every ground that you actually come on. I'm not quite sure what the agenda is against you. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like I said to you just uh, before the show, I said I came on at, uh, for Ross County at Motherwell. And, and got booed on the pitch from the Motherwell fans, and and you know, and then they, they shouted at me about the playoff games and that. And I was like, guys, you just beat us in the playoffs, you know? <laughs> why, why do you hate me? If anything, you should laugh at me for for the fact they beat me. But I don't know. I've had it up at Dundee as well, um, coming on and, and and or kind of getting booed from the home fans and. Um, you know, it's, I don't know why. I maybe just got one of those faces that people like like to hit. <laughs> you love him being on the show, don't you, oh, Baz? Brilliant. <laughs> listen, I just just him before the programme. Well, welcome to my world. So, okay, it's, but listen, it's it's all good banter at times. I, I don't mind it. It fired me up when I went to yeah. all the grounds when I used to get a bit of stick. I don't mind it. I gave a wee bit back. They gave me some, so I'm fine with it. 
Yeah, roll on. Um, that's what I see. I like a bit of banter between fans uh, and players as long as it just doesn't go over um, the edge. Uh, as far as the other weekend games are concerned, well, suddenly, uh, you know, it comes home to roost, Ruffy. You can't have that many injuries and still hope to sustain your place at the top of the table. Hearts just can't buy a goal now because of those key injuries. No, they couldn't buy a goal, but I thought the performance was pretty good. The, the bits that I saw, they had chances to win the game, uh, but just obviously never took them on the day. And even when I saw Craig's uh, after the game, I don't think he was, he was upset and not winning, obviously, but not too upset with the performance they put in. But as you said there, what do you expect with so four or five players, first team players out? So they'll just have to get back on the rails again. Yeah, I can't take anything away from Kelly though. It's a win. It's a it's a difficult place to get a win uh, at Tyne Castle, and Steve Clark seems to be working wonders with them, Richard. Yeah, he does. Again, you know, I think they've kind of, you know, went back to the basics. They're very well organised. They do the basics of the game well. They defend well. Um, you know, they clear the lines when they have to. They, they, they keep a very tight shape. Um, they don't panic. You know, if you if you move the ball side to side, they're comfortable in in, in their shape and they move with the ball and um, and they don't give up many opportunities. And you know, like Ruffy said, there I have seen the highlights of the game and, and Hearts played well, couldn't score, but Kamarnik just hang in there, hang in there, and then they take the chance when it arises and, and you know they walk away with three points. And like you say, it's Tynecastle is a difficult place to go and win. Yeah, everybody talks about the fact that obviously Celtic have got the biggest squad and they might be one of the most difficult to play against. But is there a team that you just look at and you think, I don't like playing against them? Um, <laughs> certainly <coughs> in recent times, Kilmarnock have been there. Um, you know, for me personally, you're kind of usually up against Jordan Jones, which is, you know, kind of no easy task, <laughs> you know, unless you brought your motorbike with you, because you can, you can <laughs> fairly shift. But, um, you know, and I think just because they're kind of dogged, like I say, they're kind of in your face, they press you really quickly, they don't give you time to settle on the ball, they don't give up many opportunities. So, um, and you know, and they've got that threat going forward as well. It's not just as if they're sitting defensively, but yeah, I think in kind of recent times, Kilmarnock would definitely be the team that you know you, you just you don't look forward to the games against them. Yeah, Barry seven one. You've got to score the goals. You've got to respond after the disappointment, <coughs> I think, of the midweek calamity in in Spartak <coughs> Moscow's ground. This time they did respond, albeit against ten men. Rangers seven one against Motherwell. Yeah, well, defensively on Thursday night it wasn't great. Um, um, that watched the game would, would uh, I think, totally agree with that. Um, but they've, listen, they've responded in the right way. Um, I know Muddle got a man sent off 10 minutes before half time, but as you says, you've still got to go and perform and, and score the goal. So surely that will give them a, a bit of confidence, scoring seven goals at home. Um, and they've, they've, their home record this year has been, been really good. So look, they're still in my chance. Look, as Hearts as well, Hearts are going through a difficult period, you've mentioned. I still think Hearts will be up there. Or thereabouts. So it'll be a lot tighter, I think, this season. Yeah, the funny thing about it is, and, and you've been a bit like a yo yo with your emotions on the programme because <laughs> there was a period where I felt as if you were you were getting really excited about a possible title challenge, then it kind of faded away and now, you know, two points off the top Rangers. <clears throat> yeah, but there's still a lot a lot of football to be played. I still think and a lot of people will probably be I'm um, not happy with his comment, but I still think Celtic are by far the strongest team in the league. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, Rangers just need to stay close by. And then once it gets to the nitty gritty the last couple of months of the season, if they're still up and a couple of points behind on their level, then you can start talking to uh, maybe having a chance. Yeah, I mean, it's early days, uh, you know, in a, a long season, but is that the way you see it, Richard, or do you think it's going to be a lot tighter with someone else maybe coming out of the um, pack? I think, I think the league will be tighter this year. Um, I do still I agree with Barry. I do still think Celtic are the, are the best team in the league. Um, and, I th you know, especially the last couple of seasons, they've shown that mm -hmm. over the course, you know, they can kind of produce when they need to. Um, obviously, they kind of hit a bit of a sticky patch in the league, but um, then they came t to McDermott Park and we kind of <laughs> reignited the fire for them. But, um, it's your fault for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I still think, you know, they're, they're the team to catch. You know, it's, it's great that kind of Rangers are back up there, that Hearts are up there, that, um, you know, ourselves, Kilmarnock, were up there as well. So it's, it is a long season, there's loads of games to play, but, um, you know, it's, it's always great to have the points on the board. And, um, 
you know, I think Celtic have kind of they've got a few games in hand, and uh, I think once they get rid of them, they'll, they'll be back in top of the league, and they'll be a very difficult team to catch. Yeah, uh, Ruffy, um, as ever, we're never too far away from controversy with games. Um, Stephen Robinson was sent to the stand for Muller. He wasn't mm. happy at uh, Alfredo Morelos. He, he felt as if maybe he duped the referee into the first yellow card for Carol McHugh, and by the time he blocks the ball with his hand, he gets a second yellow and he's off. Yeah, the first one didn't look that bad. You know, I think Morelos made the most of it. You know, and uh, that's what happens. There's people obviously react differently to these kind of challenges, and they got the boy booked. This what's hand one one really annoys me. I, I don't know what Richard's saying. He's play, still playing in the game. See that? I don't know why we just don't revert back to deliberate handball. Somebody who puts their hand up to stop the ball because you're going into tackles where your arms are all over the place, and you're not you're not anywhere near, you know, deliberately handing your the ball. It's just where you are. And to get penalties for that, it must be re really galling, you know, if you're playing the game. Especially if there's a short space between the guy who's hitting yeah. the ball and the defender. <clears throat> I totally agree. If you look at Carl McHugh, he, he's running to block the shot. So unless you, you, you need to make him run with his arms at his side and then slide. And now, you know, I don't know how many people in the world can do that, but it's a difficult. So he runs and he slides and his arms up. Yeah. And this, they, they still use deliberate handball. Now, if I throw the ball to you and you stick out your hand, that's deliberate. If I throw the ball at your arm and it hits you, You've not intentionally done that, therefore it's not a deliberate handball. So he's, his hand is there, but his hand is there before the ball and it just hits it. Yeah. So for me, it's, it's certainly not a, a second yellow card. Um, and, it, you know, it's, it's, it's probably not even a penalty. Right, um, soft. Because, I mean, what, what is the guy meant to do? You know, like I say, you meant to now run about with your arms like tucked into your shorts. See, that's what you're seeing now. Like, fullbacks going to close the ball down, yeah. they've got their arms behind their back. I don't like that. Yeah. I well, I like think that. it throws your balance off if it's somebody's it's actually going to go one way, then the other. Yeah. So if he, if he goes to cross it and you, you keep your arms there, great. If he hits it off you, but if he takes another touch, you then can't move. Like you say, you use them for your balance. So yeah. if my hand's here before the ball and the ball strikes it, I've not intentionally done that. So therefore, for me, it's, it's not a foul. It's not yeah. a penalty. The only guy I've actually witnessed this season who's actually managed to keep his hands down by his side was the guy who r ran under the wall when Suarez was taking the free kick and turned his back uh, to the play and managed to block the shot because Suarez has ever uh, played the ball under the wall. But other than that, I agree with you. It's, it's very difficult for any defender to do that. Um, nevertheless, it, you know, he picked up the second. The other part, uh, Ruffy, was quite simply, was he duped by Morelos for the first yellow card? That's the problem. Yeah, I think so. I think Morales went down far too easy, you know, but it's part and parcel of the game now. If you're going to tackle somebody, you've got to watch what you're doing. And uh, unfortunately, sometimes you get a yellow card for nothing. Yep, OK. Uh, Livingston Celtic, we, we thought they were going to go there <coughs> and continue the, the feel-good after Leipzig, but... I'm not going to make uh, this excuse for Celtic because I think every team's had to put up with that ghastly pitch, Barry. In the end, Celtic couldn't find a way through. Yeah, I'm not using it as an excuse. I think it's a leveller. When teams are going to go there and play against Livingston, I mean, Richard, I tell you, he was there a couple of weeks ago. It's a difficult pitch. I mean, I've, I've not actually been on it. I've only seen it on TV. But you hear people talking about it. I've known guys that have went there and played. And they're, they're saying the difference between that one and Hamilton Aki's new pitch is, is night and day. So it's going to be a leveller. Um, and you notice with Celtic, they changed the, the way the style of play. They started playing balls into the corner. I've not really seen Celtic doing that. Celtic are more through midfield and starting to get the ball about. So it's going to be, it is definitely, it's going to help Livingston. There's no doubt in my mind. They obviously train in it every day. They'll start to get used to it. But it, I think it was a, a disadvantage for Celtic going there on Sunday because yeah. of the pitch. From a player's perspective, uh, I mean, even at 33, you've played in every surface you could possibly think of. I, I think there are too many black pellets on it to start with. That's the first thing. And I, and I do think, I agree with Steven Gerrard, Brendan Rodgers, numerous other managers, we've got to look at maybe getting a fund together to say, look, you know, if you want an AstroTurf pitch, make it a training pitch, get back to grass at the top level. I think we're a laughing stock. Yeah, I think I think is it in, in, in the Netherlands have done that recently. The top teams there have said, look, we don't want any of these in the league. So they've kind of put their Champions League money or whatever it is, Europe, uh, Europa League money. And I think it, it's, you know, the ball bounces differently. It moves differently. It's much quicker. You can't, if, if I sprint to close someone down, I can't stop in time for them to change direction. You kind of tend to just have to keep going or run into them, um, which then you give away free kicks and penalties, and or you don't go as close and you can't really kind of, you know, you can't get into the game as much as you would before. I think it, it needs to be wet for it to be 
moderately playable, but then you slip all the time because you know it, it's such a slidey surface, um, and it's just you know it's harsher on your joints in terms of when you're jumping for headers and twisting and turning. And it's just it's you never feel great once you've came off an astroturf pitch. Yeah. Um, and and I agree with Barry. It, it is it is a bit of a leveller. Um, I mean, like we were there a couple of weeks ago and. The, the times you, you try and pass the ball about, but you know that if if you miss a pass by a yard, which usually on a grass pitch is fine, the guy can step and get it. On that pitch, they can't. They yeah. can't change the direction to get the ball, and you know you could end up kind of passing the ball in midfield, losing the ball, there and losing a goal from from a, a relatively kind of nothing <coughs> pass. So you end up just reverting to playing in the channels, playing the safe ball, kind of get up on second balls, and you and you try and play Livingston at their own game, but you're not as good as as they are because that's you know they, they've kind of perfected the art of, of the way they play yeah I, I won't take anything away from them defensively though you've got to hand it to them that you know when they do get organized at home they're, they're tough to break yeah. down barry yeah but i mean i watched them for this show a number of times last season and it's basically the same the same team uh, that's come up from the championship may even come up for league one sorry as well but they're, they're I know a lot of people say they're physical, three-five-two, but they've, stuck, they've got some decent footballers in the uh, um, in that team. Um, I think they'll be they'll be okay. I know they went through a wee bit of a sticky patch last couple of results, but I think they'll be fine this season. Yeah, and, and if there's ever a, a confidence booster for Richard, it's the fact that Kenny Miller's still scoring goals as well. <laughs> 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 he got a goal in the end, a draw. I don't think it suited either of them. No, no, but it's Kenny Miller, isn't it? In the right place at the right time. And everybody's shouting for offside. He's he's off, he's away, he's he's taking the goal. And that's, that's what a sign of a good striker is. But no, I think Jim, Jim McIntyre will take something from that game. You know, they're always good to get a, a point when you're when things aren't going well. So. You may just see a wee resurgence for them there. Yeah, and your old team Aberdeen got the win against Hibernian. It was always going to be tight. Gary Mackay Stephen is another one of those players that I think most of us hope that he can just start to do it on a regular basis. And, and I'm seeing signs of that this season. Uh, yeah, certainly, you know, and, and he's kind of obviously then been called into the Scotland squad on the back of that, which is, is good for him. And, <coughs> he, you know, he is, he's quick. He's quick. He's one of those guys that's quicker with the ball than he is without it. You know, when you see him tracking back, he looks really slow. But then he gets the ball and runs at you, and you think, "Jesus is a different player." And he's he's very clever with the, with his feet, and um, he's got a great left foot. Um, and he's he's a difficult player to play against. Um, and if he, he just has that level of consistency to his game, that he's obviously got in there because he's he's proven it now. Then he, he is, you know, he will kind of come forward as probably one of the best attacking players in the league. Yeah, uh, four players brought into this Scotland squad, Barry, just before we finish. Bates, Jack, McTominay and Bain. I think, you know, Xander Clark might feel a little bit peeved that he yep. wasn't looked on. Yep, I've, I've seen a lot of him. I think he's a he's going to be a top-class goalkeeper. Even young boy Kelly at Livingston can feel a bit aggrieved as well. He's had a, a fantastic um, start, so... Yeah, I, I thought Alec would have maybe brought in one of these these boys and gave them the chance to go and, and show an international stage. Just didn't mean I know they wouldn't have played, but to be in the environment, get a closer look at them. Um, I thought they two boys were in with a good shout. Yeah, absolutely. Was Xander? Did you get the sense from him that they thought maybe he'll be looking at me? Yeah, I th I, I'm not sure. He can <laughs> keeps his cards close to his chest, but I think you know, it, you know, like I say, not even these five games, the whole season, Xander's been been in top form for us, like I said before, against Celtic it was 6-0, but if it wasn't for him it would have been 10 or 11. Um, and he pulls off, in, in this little run we've had here, he pulls off big saves at the right times, and that's what you always want from a goalkeeper. And you know what, he probably thought he, he did have a bit of a chance, especially with other goal, especially when, I think, is it the guy for Sunderland drops out, yeah. and then Craig Gordon John drops McLaughlin. out, uh, yeah. McLaughlin, and then uh, Gordon comes out and a you know, there was there's a chance, like Barry said, to kind of maybe bring in someone um, new to the, to the Scotland setup, but obviously it never never happened. A couple of things to go before we finish, uh, Ruffy, that I've got to get your thoughts on. Um, Ryan Christie, no great surprise. There was a sniff mm -hmm. that he was going to get the new deal. He does <coughs> get the new deal. Yeah, he's done nothing wrong since he came in. Obviously, with Brendan Rodgers, you've got to sort of, uh, you know, give him something to think about. And I don't think it's been difficult, you know, with the performance he's put in. And he justifies it, you know, we've seen him even when he was out on loan, we thought he's got something special, you know, but now he's come to a big club, he's holding down the place, he's scoring goals, why not give him three years? Yeah, OK, um, just before we look at the predictor, Ruffy, which it's been, a, it's been <coughs> a bad week for you again, you're falling further behind, I don't think there's any way back, but uh, would you like to make any kind of a statement? It's going to be the <laughs> toughest AGM ever for you this week. Oh, no, no, <laughs> so I think we've all been there in the football and sense, when you're down there, nothing's happened for you, but you have to keep uh, plugging away and I'm, I'm sure I can turn this round for the end.
Yeah, yeah. I'm not on the I'm talking about the predictor. I'm, I'm, talk, I'm talking about Barty <laughs> Fizzle. <laughs> Since oh, you've joined God. Ruffy, we were actually going yeah. to, Barry and I were going to make the placards, yeah. Ruffy out, but yeah. we think yeah. well, you deserve maybe the winter break, you know, the international yeah. break. No, I, I, I know it sounds silly. The yeah. guys, again, have been there before. We're not getting the results. We're not getting the breaks. Playing good football, better than what we were. So there's a positive there. We just need a win, yeah. just like everybody else. Yeah, OK, let's have a look at the predictor now to see, to see how far behind you are. But, uh, oof, <laughs> Ruffy, you need snookers. You're struggling. You're struggling. I had two bad yeah. weeks. I had two yeah. bad weeks, and I'm suffering for it. But you usually have two bad weeks as well. Yeah. Baz, are you worried about the fact that I'm just forging ahead? You know what they say, footballers, you know nothing. Yeah, listen, I'm not too concerned. that I've, Ruffy, he's, he's out the window. Um, it's just between me and you. But I'm, I'll get that back. Yeah, fingers crossed. Listen, if you don't get a Scotland cap before you hit 34, we'll be <coughs> absolutely raging, Richard. We uh, we keep our fingers crossed for you. And, of course, great that St Johnson are doing so well. Uh, delighted you could come on the programme. Uh, Richard Foster, our special guest on this Monday. Join us tomorrow. We'll be back talking more football, looking ahead, of course, to Scotland against uh, USA in the women's game. And we'll also uh, hear from the Scotland international camp in the men's game as we've got two big games coming up, just in case you haven't heard. Thanks to Ruffy, thanks to Barry, thanks to Richard Foster and from everyone here. Don't forget you can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Thanks for watching.